On today's Locked on Jayhawks, we preview a top 25 showdown in Ames, Iowa between the 7th ranked Kansas Jayhawks and the 23rd ranked Iowa State Cyclones. You are Locked on Jayhawks, your daily podcast on the Kansas Jayhawks, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Derek Johnson. You can hear me as well Monday through Friday from 3 to 6 p.m. on KLWN in Lawrence with Rock Chalk Sports Talk. Thanks for making Locked on Jayhawks your first listen every day. We are free and available anywhere you get your podcast, including on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. We're previewing Kansas-Iowa State today. Top 25 showdown. We'll get to our big storylines coming into the game. Our Iowa State scouting report matchups of the game where KU needs to perform if they want to come out on top and Hawks to soar, what KU players could have, you know, some sort of favorable matchup in this game. First, we are brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKED ON for $20 off your first purchase with Game Time. So, KU Iowa State, this game on Saturday at 12 30 Central Time. Pre game will start at 11 on KLWN and 1059 Kiss for the radio side of things in Lawrence and This is a uh, big game. It's funny because Kansas ranked seventh, Iowa State ranked 23rd. If you look at some of the metric sites, Iowa State is actually the team who is ranked higher. Like Ken Palm has Iowa State ranked 12th and Kansas is 18th, right? So you're playing on the road against technically by some sites what is viewed to be a bigger team. I guess this is an opportunity to uh, actually take KU getting some points here whenever the betting line does come out. But uh, KU's road struggles come more into focus coming into this game because so far KU has gone – uh, they've gotten a couple wins on the road. They're two and two, but in every game on the road that they played, except for one, so three of the four, still small sample size, but still a majority of them, you've probably played, I don't know, worse than maybe you would expected, right? Like in the Oklahoma State game, you blew them out. That was a great game for you on the road. Indiana game on the road, it was it was a game that you kind of had to sneak out late. And obviously it was closer than maybe the spread was expected to be. And you needed some late heroics to win the game with the UCF game. Obviously you just played poorly and you lost that game. And then with the West Virginia game, a combination of missing out on a few chances and uh, allowing them to get comfortable offensively and them also just hitting a bunch of shots. You have had some road struggles here to start the season. Doesn't get any easier on Saturday in Ames, which is one of the best home court environments in college basketball in, in the big 12. Uh, Get ready to hear the word boo. That is a fan favorite of Iowa State fans. And they were uh, jazzed up just the other night playing on uh, against Kansas State. Drum Tang gets a technical. You see some like seven year old guys in the in the in the stands like I don't know. It it was a very interesting scene to say the least. So it's going to be hyped up as it always is in Ames. This will be a tough place to play for KU, though. They have actually had a lot of success playing in Ames. Typically, that was something that Bill Self mentioned earlier. Like, typically, if you're saying, hey, you're playing a really good opponent on the road, if you can win 50% of those, you'll take that. And KU's above that mark. Now, I think there's an interesting storyline here developing in terms of Big 12 title race. Uh, For my money, Houston is the favorite. Right now, you look at FanDuel, Houston is by far the betting favorite. They're under plus 200. They're like plus 110 right now to win the Big 12. Kansas is second at like plus 425. You can get Iowa State at 10 to 1 right now on FanDuel. I think for my money, I would put Houston as kind of that top team right now while Kansas is trying to figure out some of this stuff. Now, I'd be fine putting Kansas in the same tier, especially because of the history and what Bill Self has done and everything like that. For me, Iowa State would be near that or in that same tier. And if Iowa State wins this game, I think I would view them and Houston as the top two Big 12 title contenders if they win this game. Because if they win this game, Kansas would be sitting at four and three. You would have your toughest stretch of the season upcoming once February starts, playing Houston twice, playing Texas, Kansas State twice, playing Baylor twice, playing at Texas Tech. A lot of tough games to come for Kansas, where if you lose a game at four and three and you're talking about even 13 and five winning the conference, that means you got to go nine and two the rest of the way against a very difficult schedule. And if Iowa State wins this game, they would be sitting at five and two in Big 12 play with wins over Kansas and Houston, both those at home. And Iowa State's schedule is a little bit more favorable than KU's is. Like, for instance, Iowa State doesn't have to go to a return trip to Lawrence to play KU. Iowa State doesn't have to play at Texas Tech like Kansas does, which is another one of the best environments in the conference and in the country when they're right. And Texas Tech's got a good team. So 
Um, I do think if Iowa State wins this game, I start taking them very seriously as a team that can win the Big 12 title. Now, another big storyline coming in this one, what is Kansas going to get from the bench? Haven't seen much lately. Just outscored, what was it, 34-2 to two with bench points against Cincinnati. In league-only games, Kansas is down to 9.2 bench points per game. That is in the first percentile of the country. So 99% of college basketball is scoring more per game. I get it. KU's not playing a ton of players off the bench. But if you combine all of KU's bench minutes last game against Cincinnati, 27 bench minutes, two points, right? You can still have better efficiency than that. Maybe you're never going to be, you know, 20 bench points per game. Can you get to 14, 15, right? I think that would be doable and okay if some of these guys can hit, and you might need that in this game. Iowa State scouting report, they're 15 and four on the season, four and two. In Big 12 play, they ranked top 15 in Ken Palm. They've had a really good start to the year. In non-con, bit of a weaker schedule outside of a couple games. They uh, did have that battle for Atlantis tournament where they played some good opponents. They also had the Iowa game where they beat an, a top 50 Iowa team by a lot. They beat VCU, who's a top 100 team. And then they have losses to Virginia Tech and Texas A&M. So in non-con play, only two and two against Ken Palm top 100 opponents Then beat the breaks off of teams who are ranked in the 200s, 300s. That buoyed their Ken Palm ranking to make them ranked a little bit higher. But so far in league play, eight-point loss at Oklahoma to open things up. Their other uh, Big 12 loss was a 15-point loss at BYU. Unfortunately, the, the theme there for Kansas, both those were on the road. They have a one-point win at TCU, so there is a good road win for them. And that was out without Tamin Lipsy. Uh, this past weekend at home they've gotten wins over Houston Oklahoma State and most recently earlier this week Kansas State what they do well well defense just overall this is one of the best defenses in the entire country for Iowa State they're top five in the country on defensive efficiency on Ken Palm they're the number one turnover defense in the entire nation forcing turnovers at a 26.6 percent clip meaning Basically, one in every four possessions for the opposing offense is ending in a turnover. They are top 70 in the country as well in defensive rebounding rate, top 40 in the country in two-point defense rate, so they've been good in both those. Though I will say in conference-only games, both those numbers have uh, dropped pretty severely, so maybe we're still trying to figure out what exactly they are there. But either way, this is the best stealing team, the best turnover team in the country, and that leads to having a really, really good defense. Offensively, they've done a solid job avoiding turnovers. They've also been really strong at getting offensive rebounds, getting to the free throw line, and at two-point offense. So they're hitting shots inside. they got a lengthy athletic team, an aggressive physical team. Uh, they get to the free throw line. They are able to win some points there. They win extra possessions by getting those offensive rebounds. What they don't do well, overall, still more of just an average offense. Now, this is a much better offense than we've seen the past two years for Iowa State. Last couple of years, ever since TJ Otzelberger came in and he's done an excellent job there, they've had elite defenses each and every year he's been there. But the offenses have been ranked like outside of the top 100. This year, they're ranking just outside the top 50, but it's a huge improvement. And given what they have defensively, like the, that's huge strides to make you a legit conference title contender. Uh, they're only ninth in the big 12 in conference only games in offense. So again, it's not a strength, but better than the last few years, three point shooting has actually been fine on the year for them. 34.6% on low volume, but that number is not carried over to big 12 only games. They're shooting just 26.5% from three in big 12 games. They rank bottom two in the conference in three point percentage and in terms of the volume with three point per field goal attempts. They're not taking them a lot. They're not making them a lot. Now, as I've said many times, we've uh, gone through that same song and dance with a lot of KU opponents, and it hasn't mattered. They've gotten hot from three against KU. So maybe this is uh, another one of those. Free throw shooting also has not been very good for Iowa State. Just not a great shooting team, I'd say, overall. Defensively, they do foul, so you're going to force teams to the free throw line. KU's got to make your free throws in this. They also, in Big 12-only games, rank 12th of the 14 teams in defensive rebounding rate and 10th of the 14 teams in two point defense. So that number has not been elite in big 12 only games. The personnel is led by Tamin Lipsy just coming off that injury. He did play against Kansas state. He's been one of the best point guards in the conference and the entire country over 14 points per game, 5.3 rebounds, 5.6 assists, 
3.2 steals. He's shooting 44% from the floor, 37% from three, and he's an excellent defender by defensive BPR on Evan Miyakawa's site. He is number four in the entire Big 12, and he is the best defender among non-Houston players who have the entirety of the top three. So he leads the way at the point guard spot. Curtis Jones is the main two-man. He averages over nine points per game, three rebounds, two assists, two steals, only 33% from three, but very high volume. He can get hot on any given night, and he'll do it on high volume, and he can go four of six. Uh, freshman six foot eight wing Milan Momchilovic is the main three man. He'll play a little bit of four, over 13 points per game, three and a half rebounds. Just a good shooter, good offensive player. 47 40 85 shooting splits. So he can shoot it from all over. He'll hit tough shots, and he really adds a, a nice element to this Iowa State team as just a freshman. Keyshawn Gilbert will back up all three of those guys. He'll he'll play some one and not even necessarily backup, like he can be a starter, but he'll play at the one, the two, and the three. They basically play all four of those guys, and, and that'll take up the chunk of the minutes at the one, two, and three. He gets 13.6 points per game, 4.6 rebounds, 4.3 assists, 1.7 steals. He's putting up good numbers, 46% shooting. His numbers have dipped off in Big 12 play. Had a good game against Kansas State, though. He is only 25% from three. And then Trey King at six foot seven, two thirty. He plays the four. They don't have as much pop at the four and five positions. Uh, he's not much of a shooter, but gets over nine points, five rebounds per game, so helps him on the glass. At the center, it's a split with 6'10", 255, Robert Jones, who's getting about nine points, four and a half rebounds. Good shooter inside, or, or 67% good efficiency inside, but not really a shooter, not much offensive game. 6'9", 230, Hassan Ward, 7.4 points, 4.4 rebounds, 65%. They combine for 1.7 blocks per game. Both of them combined for... 16 points per game but it's more of just a you know rim runner dunker offensive rebound put back type of center than somebody who's going to just go to work all the time on the post they also have uh, Jackson Pavletsky off the bench he can hit shots not a great defender and then Demary and Watson who's kind of a glue guy wing coming off the bench will both get limited playing time all right let's get to our matchups of the game and our Hawks to soar on this episode of Locked on Jayhawks First, we are brought to you by Game Time. Buying tickets to your favorite sporting event should not be stressful. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for sports, music, comedy, and theater near you with killer deals on last minute tickets and their best price guarantee. So you can stop stressing over the tickets you're having and get hyped for the fun that you're going to be having. Uh, one of the cool things about the Game Time app is you can pull up on the interface and you can see pictures for all the different you know, uh, seats of the, the game and whatever ticket that you're trying to get to, you can see exactly the view of where you're going to be sitting. So it's not a guessing game about, oh, I hope these are good seats. You can also see the stadium view and check out, you know, seats in different, uh, I guess, sections. If you have a certain section that's your favorite or is your good luck section or is somewhere specifically you want to sit right now, you can uh, get tickets for the KU Iowa State game. If you're making a last minute trip with game time, and you don't have to worry about the hassle. You can snag the tickets with game time the same day up. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Matchups of the game. Let's start with our first matchup here is KU protecting the basketball. Uh, in games where Iowa State forces 23% or more of a turnover rate, they are 14-0. and In games where Iowa State forces less than a 23% turnover rate, they're only 1-4. in four. If you can protect the basketball, you can win this game. We saw Kansas have some struggles with that against UCF and TCU to open up Big 12 play, but since then, they've done a much better job at it. Can that carry over into this game? Or... Has it just gotten better because they've played weaker opponents at it, right? UCF and TC are good at it. The teams they've played recently, you know, there's some that have been at least above average or solid at it, but they're not as good at it, especially as an Iowa State. And for the Kansas side of things, KU is 14-1 and one this season when they have a turnover rate offensively of less than 23%. But they're only two and two when it's 23% or higher. So that goes right in line with what Iowa State's doing. The problem here is Iowa State's really, really good at it. They're number one in the country in turnover rate defense. They're number one in the country in steal rate defense. And when KU has had to play those good teams, you've shown some cracks. So here's uh, the list of teams that KU has had to play who currently have top 60 turnover rates in the country. Marquette, that was a 14-point loss. UCF, five-point loss. TCU, where you maybe were a little bit fortunate to win that game, snuck out a win. Eastern Illinois, way too close for comfort. You won by eight in a game you're favored by almost 30. 
and Missouri. That one was a little bit closer than expected. So against better turnover teams, KU has turned it over more, and that's been very problematic to winning games. That's the scary part here, especially playing on the road in Ames against Iowa State. Number two is the KU defensive rebounding versus Iowa State offensive rebounding. Iowa State has had 14 games this year with an offensive rebound rate of 30% or higher, meaning that three out of every 10 misses, uh, they're basically getting the offensive rebound. For Kansas, when they allow an offensive rebounding rate of 30% or higher, they are 4-2. and two. That's, you know, a, a lot different than the record when they don't. Uh, when they hold teams to under 30% on offensive rebounding, it's 12-1. and one. So 12-1 and one versus 4-2. and two. And even when you look at three of those 4-2 and two wins, it's Eastern Illinois, TCU, and Cincinnati, all games that were, you know, single-digit games and in the case of TCU and Cincinnati, uh, more so TCU, uh, a, a very close game to the very finish. So KU overall has actually been fine at defensive rebounding rate. I think that would surprise some people, especially after the recent games with Cincinnati and TCU. Kansas ranks in the top 100 right now nationally in defensive rebounding rate. Now you could say, okay, that's fine, but that's not great. Here's the thing. That would actually be KU's best ranking since the 2015-2016 season when KU ranked 86th. Right now, they're in the 90s. So this would actually be a more than okay defensive rebounding team for what Bill Self has had recently. And, and obviously, they've had multiple Final Four teams since then, even despite not having you know great defensive rebounding numbers. They're actually in range of, of being good at it. Um, but in Big 12-only games, that's been the problem. They're only ninth in Big 12-only games in defensive rebounding rate. And the fall recently has been weird because you've added Johnny Furphy into the starting lineup overall Marco Jackson, which gives you more rebounding, right? Like obviously you think of the West Virginia game where Furphy missed the box out, but still overall Furphy is a much better rebounder than a Marco Jackson was. So why are they doing worse rebounding right now? Well, maybe you guys just need to, I, I don't know, uh, refocus on it. And that was something that Bill Self mentioned earlier this week that um, he doesn't think they're going to be a great rebounding team, but he said, we need to be a good rebounding team. And I think that that's accurate and something that maybe there's a more concerted effort in this game, specifically because of some of the recent struggles there and because Iowa State does a good job there. Iowa State's getting 13.4 second chance points per game. That's in the 93rd percentile of the country per CBB analytics. So you have to be at least, you can't let them have a takeover game on the offensive glass. Number three is fast break scoring. Overall, Kansas averages 13.2 fast break points per game. Iowa State is at 12.2. So this seems like a pretty even category. But in Big 12 only games, Iowa State's down to seven and a half fast break points per game. Whereas Kansas has seen their fast break point per game number go up to 13.8. So that's almost doubling them up. It's, it's about six and a half points per game in fast break better than them. This should be an edge on paper for coming into the game. And the more that Kansas can emphasize that edge and be better at it, the better it is for them. Because when you talk about Iowa State having an elite defense, what's one way to avoid having to play against an elite defense? It's just beat them down the court. Score in transition so you don't have to go up against them half court. Now, there is one double-edged sword to this. It's that if you try too hard to play fast, if you try too hard to push the ball, and you become too risk, uh, I guess risky with some of your passes and what you're doing to try to push it too hard, do you turn it over more against a team who's very good at forcing turnovers? So there is a little bit of a fine line here with this one, but Kansas needs to do a good job of scoring in transition and maximizing those opportunities and getting them as much as possible because that will be critical in avoiding those half-court settings against this Iowa State defense. As far as our player matchup here, we're going to go with Dewan Harris versus Tameen Lipsy. Lipsy is Iowa State's best player. Uh, to me, he's been an all-conference first-team pick so far. And when you go back to our first matchup, KU needs to avoid turnovers. Well, to me, Lipsy is Iowa State's best steal guy. He averages 3.2 steals per game. He's had seven games this year with four or more steals, including a season high of eight steals. He can take over the game stealing the basketball. Well, Dewan Harris is KU's main you know, uh, ball handler, and to me, Lipsy probably going to be guarding him. So it's going to be mainly on Dewan to avoid those turnovers. He had five last game. The rest of the team had six. You know, he's got to avoid those. A big part of this game is going to be on Dewan. And it's not even that Dewan has to outplay to mean Lipsy, because I, I don't know that that's a realistic expectation. It's that he has to at least be good with the basketball, make smart decisions, and play good defense on Lipsy and kind of neutralize one of their best players on both ends of the court as much as possible. And if so, Kansas can win this game. All right, let's get on to our Hawks to soar. What players we think are set up for maybe a good matchup in, in certain areas on this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. 
First, we are brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL regular season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is so easy to use, and there's so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays, Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays. You can get in on the Chiefs as a underdog against the Ravens in the championship game over the weekend. You can get in on Kansas to win the Big 12 right now. That future going off at plus 425, so actually some decent odds on that right now if you're still a believer that they can get it done. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. All right, Hawks, the sore to finish things up on this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. Thank you for tuning in on this show. We'll have a recap coming out after the game happens. Um, so Iowa State, it's a lot harder to pick a player or something uh, against a team who has an elite defense where you're like, yeah, here's a weak point for him because they don't really have that many weak points. So it's hard to be like, oh, this guy's going to have a good game. But here's one thing that I find very interesting. Iowa State is elite at not giving up shots at the rim. They are literally in the 99th percentile in the country at uh, avoiding shots at the rim, basically. Teams do not get shots at the rim. And what does Kansas like to do? They like to get shots at the rim. And they do it a couple ways. One, they have a couple good centers and they have some length that you know maybe prevents you from even wanting to take the shot. But I think above all else, Iowa State does an excellent job you know, just preventing the ball from getting into the post. The guards do a good job preventing penetration from other guards. And they do an excellent job pressuring the ball. So it's going to be harder for guards to even throw it to the post. Then on top of it, if you're fronting the post, if you're doubling the post, they just do an excellent job and they force a bunch of turnovers. They they get steals off it from even preventing you from taking those shots. So maybe that makes it a tougher game for Hunter Dickinson to get shots down low. Uh, Overall, they just prevent all sorts of twos. You look at every number of twos and they're, you know, teams are not getting a ton of shots up. One thing that is interesting is, is in, uh, Big 12 only games, they're not giving up a lot of mid-range twos, but they are overall in the season giving up a lot of mid-range twos. So I don't know what to make of that. One thing of interest, KU on the regular season uh, or overall season, not a good mid-range shooting team, but in conference only games, they're actually shooting really well so far from the mid-range. So maybe that becomes interesting here. But here's the one area that teams have actually gotten up a good amount of shots. The one constant is amount of threes given up. They are like one of the... Uh, in terms of three point attempts per field goal attempts, like they are one of the bottom five or bottom 10 teams in the country in terms of the amount of threes that they're giving up per game. Teams have shot a lot of threes against them. So far, they are Iowa State's in the first percentile for preventing corner threes per field goal attempt and second percentile in above the break threes per field goal attempt. So basically, you know, teams are just launching threes against them and part of it is because you can't score inside so you kind of have to and that does make it a little easier for Iowa State they expect you to take threes from the outside so they're more contested but they're going to give them up and they're going to sacrifice at least giving up a few open threes for stopping you on the inside to that notion Hawks to soar for KU has to be players who will and can shoot threes so there's three guys I'm looking at here Nick Timberlake to a lesser degree because he'll get some chances in this game will he make them that remains to be seen but it's two main guys Kevin McCuller and Johnny Furphy, both who carried you offensively last game against Cincinnati. I think this can be a a solid game for them, both offensively hitting some threes once again for you. And it's going to be pretty imperative for them to hit threes at a high rate in this game because you're not going to get as many shots at the rim as you uh, normally might. And maybe that even means Hunter Dickinson gets uh, four threes in this game as opposed to taking two or three like we see kind of game in, game out. Dewan Harris has got to be willing to pull the trigger in this game because you're not going to get a ton of great looks. If you get an even decent one, you have to shoot it. But I think Furphy and Kevin McCuller are the guys I look at and say, okay, they give up a lot of threes. You're the two big volume three-point shooters. Go out and hit them for KU. That'll do it for this episode of Locked on Jayhawks. You can find us anywhere you get your podcast including on our YouTube page where you can like and subscribe to the show. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you over the weekend on Locked on Jayhawks.